Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. I see that we have a lot of attention today. This is going to be exciting. It is for the first time that Tacticaware and Velodyne do a webinar together. Tacticaware, with the Accurate Vision Solution, is one of the most experienced Velodyne integration partners. So we really look forward to this webinar, and we hope that it will meet all your expectations. Today, you have two hosts in this webinar. My name is Dieter Gabriel. I'm with Velodyne as marketing manager for the AMEA region. And with me today is Vanessa Johnson. Vanessa, would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We're super excited about this presentation. Uh, I work for a company called Tactic Aware, and I am the key account manager there. And I'm very happy that today Tactic Aware CEO Martin Wojtek will join us at the end of the webinar to contribute to the question and answers part. So let's have a look at today's agenda. We want to start with a brief overview of both companies. And before we delve into the technical details of Accurate Vision, we will look at the solution in general and explain what LiDAR makes so ideal for security applications. And later, you will see a lot of detailed application examples. One remark regarding questions from your side. We take our time to answer your questions. The whole webinar presentation is planned for plus minus 40 minutes. You cannot contribute via microphone. It's put to mute. So please use the chat function to share your questions. And by the way, in case you have questions about our LIDAR applications, use cases, which we do not cover directly with this webinar, you're welcome to contact us anytime later so we can individually follow up with you. Now, a little bit about Velodyne, just a brief intro. We've been around for quite a long time now. Our founder and owner, David Hall, invented real-time surround view LiDAR systems back in 2005. At that time, LiDAR activities were part of Velodyne Acoustics. And since then, a great success story developed. We started commercial production back in 2007, and we are indeed proud of where we are today. Here you see our global presence. I am now just talking from our Europe office near Frankfurt. Today, we have an incredible number of customers globally. We are working with most major automotive OEMs, as well as in a huge variety of emergent technology sectors. Meanwhile, our company has been inventing, producing, and testing state-of-the-art sensors for more than 13 years. And with our current range of LiDAR products, we do much more than automotive which, by the way, sets us clearly apart in the LiDAR market. Our portfolio of sensors addresses not only AV and ADAS, but also robotics, mapping, industrial equipment, machinery. We are addressing a huge variety of industrial automation tasks, UAVs, drones, agriculture, and not least, security and smart cities. And the latter, let me hand over to Vanessa now. So Vanessa, see your test, please. Our company has actually been in the security sector for about 20 plus years. Uh, we started in the security sector around 1996. Our company was then uh, called Max Progress and they started an R&D department in 2013. They started this department because they wanted to make a sort of change to the security sector, give it somewhat of a facelift. And in 2015, they started working with LiDAR technology and they came out with their first LiDAR security system called Medusa. Uh, in 2017, they actually renamed Medusa and started using a 3D engine and, given, and gave it the name Accurate Vision. Once they started with AccuraVision, they decided that they had such a unique product that they wanted to give it its own entity, its own company. So also in 2017, we decided to split the R&D department from 
the Max Progress Company, and we called it Tacticware. And this is where we are today. AcroVision actually has some very unique features to it that separates it from conventional security systems. The first one is the LiDAR technology, which allows us to have the volumetric detection, which is amazing. Once we add these with the 3D map, you have a whole new system where you're not only seeing something that's nice to look at, but you're also able to guard an entire volumetric area. We also added in the gaming industry, like the Unity 3D, which makes uh, the uh, system even look nicer. We've added some AI and virtual reality, and we've made it so user-friendly and so unique that it is also industry 4.0 ready. Okay. This picture kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. I will actually get more involved in this later on in the presentation. But in conventional security systems, you see on the left-hand side that mostly it only guards the perimeter of an area. Once the person gets over the fence, then you know that's pretty much it. You don't know where he goes or what he does. On the right-hand side, you will see that we actually have volumetric detection. So once this person even gets over the fence, you will see that we can cover an entire area, not just the perimeter. But we will actually talk more about this a little bit later. Okay. AcroVision comes with what we like to call the A8V boxes. On the left-hand side is actually our standard security box. It comes with a power supply, battery, switch, um, and the Velodyne interface. Uh, this is just kind of pretty much the standard box, but we also had to come up with the security box with BT3 certification, which you can see on the right-hand side. This security box is a little bit more high-tech because we had to have certain aspects to it for our nuclear power plant installation. This actually comes with like a tamper switch and more things too protect what's inside from any tampering or anything like this. Plus, you will also find the power supply and switch and interface box here. On the top, you will see that we also manufacture our own uh, holders. There are aluminum holders, so they are not used to rusting or anything like this. And this helps keep uh, the LiDAR in a sturdy position and gives it a little bit more life. So these three objects are mostly used in all of our installations and they're actually really, really nice and helpful. Okay. This here is actually just the detection principle of how we actually go about detecting an object. It's quite simple. Um, in the center here, you will see the Accurate Vision server. And if you go up from the server, you see the LIDARs. The LIDARs actually produce a point cloud. We do not care which LiDAR points that we use. It could be any of the LiDARs. All we care about mostly is moving points. And to do this, we came up with a filtering system to make it easier to detect the object that we want to actually detect. So first what we do is we start out with the LiDAR range. We can change the range of the LiDAR to only detect a certain area, which will then lower the point cloud points. We then move on to a LiDAR snapshot where part of the points are discarded that are in use. And then we focus mostly on the moving points. The moving points are what's important because the moving points are the object that you know, we are trying to detect. Once we have these moving points, we cluster them together in an area where if they're clustered to a certain closeness to each other, then we keep these points. Once we have the clustering set up, we then add another filter where we will set up the minimum and maximum size of the object that we want to uh, detect. Once we have this, we then move on to the alarm zone. Once these point cloud points enter an alarm zone and they're done and they're moving and they're clustered and they're a certain size, then you will have your alarm event. And this is what causes the alarm. 
you can um, also filter down a little bit more, but um, all cameras are then piloted to the alarm event, which is really nice. And it's all recorded in some event logs. So on the other side from the server, you have the Accurate Vision client. This area on the left of the server here you can see is where you actually have like the 3D map, the settings, the planning, and the virtual reality and the environment that the operators will actually pay attention to. So this is kind of where you have the map and the 3D imaging. Okay. Okay, um, let's have a look, a deeper look how LIDAR works. Our LIDAR technology uses eye-safe laser beams to create 3D representation of the surveyed environment. LIDAR offers a strong performance in a wide variety of lighting and weather conditions. And before we look at this on a more technical level, let's just look at the following example. A very nice approach was that was done with accurate vision. This time here, nothing security related was done, but Tactica there used a whole set of Velodyne sensors to detect a dancer and to transform the data into a point cloud object isolated from the environment of the dance floor, thus being capable to extract any single movement. Look at it, isn't that impressive? This was a very special scan example. Now, what's behind it in detail? Let's look at it at a more technical level. A multi-channel LiDAR sensor scans its environment with billions of photons per second and with up to 360 degrees, so it gets a complete depiction of the surrounding world. It highlights objects and makes them recognizable and it shows movement. LiDAR can handle object recognition of both non-stationary and stationary objects. Well, LiDAR is clearly a shortcoming of radar, by the way. LiDAR, as its own light source, can even see at night. And allow me a few words regarding cameras versus LiDAR. Cameras depict the world usually in 2D, means they give a flat representation of the environment. After all, our LIDARs represent the world in true 3D, as it is. Cameras fall short in dealing with critical light conditions. They lack the capability for instant object measurement and require much more computer power for advanced evaluations. But while combining both sources, camera and LIDAR, you get together a great team. Could also be combining thermal infrared with LiDAR, for example. One more important point. Think about how LiDAR is superior to radar. It can accurately identify objects at up to 250 meters or beyond, while even higher resolution radar cannot render objects accurately due to the much poorer resolution. And even more, radar can have problems with stationary objects. I love that image example here. Look at it, it speaks volumes. Having addressed all this, let's go back to security related examples. Imagine you want to survey a specific area of interest. In this example here, it's a pedestrian bridge. By the way, the scenery is near Tactica Ware's headquarter. It shows the famous medieval Charles Bridge in the city of Prague. And the data here comes from our ultra pack with 32 channels. It illustrates perfectly well one other, one other benefit of protection rules. Even though you get a great resolution from the sensor, you see you cannot recognize the faces of the pedestrians. And one more example, now an intersection scenery. Again, using an ultra pack with 32 channels. The example shows not only the great suitability of LiDAR for traffic monitoring, traffic monitoring tasks, I'd like to draw your attention to the boxes. 
These boxes represent accurate vision zones of specific interest and we get back to this soon. At Velodyne, we have a full range of sensors which enable a lot of great applications within the fields of security, traffic monitoring and smart cities. I'd just like to highlight here our current, currently most powerful LiDAR sensor. And this is what you see here on the left, our Alpha Prime. The Alpha Prime with its 128 channels gives you absolutely outstanding performance and enables a lot of applications. You can think of scenarios for security applications that would not be possible without the unsurpassed performance features of this sensor. Look at the details here inside the city. So if you would like to learn more about our comprehensive sensor portfolio, please reach out to Validine. And by the way, almost all of our sensors are fully integrated by Accurate Vision. I don't want to delve now into details here anymore and would like to hand over to Vanessa for comprehensive insights into Accurate Vision. As you can see here in this picture, this is actually a real installation uh, completed by Accurate Vision. This shows you exactly how we would set up our, our system if you were to do an installation. You have here on the railing the Accurate Vision box, which is then connected to the LiDAR. Uh, the Accurate Vision box will protect the interface and power supply in case there are any issues. Uh, this is actually a real installation completed at a nuclear power plant. So to see it here in real is exactly what you would see if uh, you were to install Accurate Vision. Okay. To touch a little bit more on what I discussed before with the conventional systems and accurate vision, this video will actually show you a better idea of what I meant. Here you can see the intruder who gets across the alarm area, which is only, you know, maybe a fence. Once he's inside though, you can tell that, you know, where does he go? What does he do? Does he hide? Does he like get into the building? We're not really sure because once he gets past that fence, there is absolutely nothing there. Okay. But with Acker Vision, it's a whole different aspect. First of all, what you see is in 3D. So you know exactly where the building is, you know exactly where the fence is, and you know, you can see everything that's happening that looks exactly like a replica of the real environment. And once you see here, once this intruder enters into this blue area, he's being detected the entire time, like an alarm is being sounded right now as, as I'm speaking. These red lines on the intruder represent where the LiDAR is actually hitting the intruder. So it is almost impossible for him to go undetected. Once an intruder actually enters into one of these zones, which I will also continue to talk about later, you'll be able to see the intruder's trajectory, speed, movement, and all these types of things. So this system is a lot more robust than the conventional security systems, which is nice for not only the operator to view, but for the people to feel secure in having their places or items safe. Okay. This here is the 3D map. Uh, the 3D map is quite important to AcroVision because not only is it really nice to look at, but you can also use this as a planning tool. Everything inside the 3D map, inside AcroVision, is an exact replica of the real environment. So to get the 3D map, we use photogrammetry with the drone. Uh, you, the drone will scan an area, take the pictures, we put it into a program and we get the 3D map. Now we do add some uh, more graphics to the uh, map if you would like. For example, in this video you have moving trees, birds, these types of things. But once you have the map inside AcroVision, you can also play with the sunlight, the ambient light, you can move the shadows to make it nicer looking. 
It's entirely up to you. But the most important thing is that you can use this map as a planning tool, which I will now show you how that's done. Okay. The first planning tool that we have in Accurate Vision is for the cameras. And as you can see, you just need to click the hardware tree camera button. And for now, we're going to use the virtual type because the virtual camera and virtual LIDAR will help you set up inside Accurate Vision before placing anything in the real environment. Once you click on add camera and OK, you will use the drag and drop system to move the camera around. You can move it left, right, up or down. It depends on, you know, however you would like to place it. The thing is with, uh, with this tool, you can kind of guess like, okay, maybe the camera would be a good idea to place it here. So you can then turn on the camera direction and you can use this rotary dial to move it to make sure, you know, hey, this is what the camera will actually see. Next, you're gonna wanna hit on our calibration editor, which will actually show you in the virtual map what a real camera would see if it was actually placed in this position. This is a fantastic tool for the installators, install, sorry, installers, because uh, they can actually see everything before placing it in the real environment so they don't have to move it or change anything out there before they do it here. So it's fantastic and really, really easy to use. Okay. Not only can we do this with the camera, but we can also do it with the LIDAR. So the same thing would happen. You go to the hardware tree, LIDARs, add, and you want to make sure it's on virtual in the beginning because this is the virtual layer that's going to help you with this planning and the setup of the installation. So in this example, we're going to use the Velodyne Ultrapuck, the 32C. And once you have it all set up, you will click OK. And same situation as the cameras, you will use the drag and drop system. And you will try to place the LiDAR in the exact location where you think it would it would look nice or give the most range. So as you can see, we're gonna try to put the LiDAR here, maybe move it around a little bit more. And once you have it in the position that you think would be nice, you can then turn on the snapshot layer, which will show you the exact area that the LiDAR will cover. These purple dots actually represent actual LiDAR hits. So even though it's a virtual LiDAR, you will be able to see exactly what area that LiDAR will cover if you place it in this position. You can also rotate them and play with it to fit your needs and to cover the area that you would like to cover. It's another really nice tool to have inside Accurate Vision. Okay. Once you have the camera, the virtual camera and the virtual LiDAR set up in the areas that you think would be the best for it, we now can test everything with our virtual intruder or virtual pond. So as you can see here, all these green dots represent exactly where the LiDAR is going to hit the intruder's body. So you see there's full coverage here in this area from the LiDAR. But if you want to test everything in the map, you can actually walk around with the intruder and he does many different things. He can run, he can crouch down, he can uh, do the military crawl. So you can actually make sure every aspect is 100% covered, which is perfect because if you have a blind spot set up, then you know this guy can test it for you and make sure that actually everything is 100% covered. And this is fantastic because not only can you use the planning tools, but you can also test the hardware before you put it out in the real environment. Okay. This is kind of an important part of accurate vision because the alarm zones are actually the areas where the alarm is going to be activated. 
So these alarm zones are going to want to be placed in your most uh, secure area, I guess, or the area that you want to have most secured. And you will use these zones and you can give them names, descriptions, pick the different colors, whatever you would like. But the best part about these zones is you can have different settings inside each of these zones. We have uh, delayed zones available. So if, if it's actually like a house or residential area and somebody needs to set alarm before the zone is activated, they are able to do this. We can also set up the zones through IO modules or these types of things for calling the police. We can um, turn on lights, shut gates. Um, the world is kind of at your fingertips here with these zones. So <laughs> whatever you would like AccraVision to do, we, the zones can do. The best part about this is not only can you have like the volumetric zones, but you can also use the zones to only make in a fenced area. So for example, if you have workers somewhere working in this area, you can just set, up, set it up so the zone that is like a, like a fence will be activated. And then once the workers leave or whoever's in that area at the time, you can then click on the alarm zone to then once again guard the entire area. So there are many things that you can do and many things and many options available for the security zones. And just one last thing is that you can have as many uh, alarm zones as you want inside the system. Okay. This is an actual alarm event here. And as you can see, uh, the moving points are placed in a bounding box. The bounding box will tell the trajectory, the speed of movement, the height of the intruder inside the bounding box. But what's really cool is the LiDAR and the cameras work together. As you can see at the bottom, the first and second camera switch and the second camera gets ready before the intruder is even, even in the view of the camera. This also helps with detecting uh, humans or intruders and making sure that they are never going unseen. Uh, it's not really technically biometric detection. We've made uh, AccraVision actually work together inside with the LiDAR in the camera. So if there is an alarm event, all cameras in that area will actually rotate to the alarm event. So you have every inch covered, not only by the LiDARs, but also by the camera. And this is very, very important to many people because you can see both the live coverage if you want, or you can see only the LiDAR coverage. It's a perfect tool inside AccraVision. Another thing with the uh, real security, um, real alarm zones is you can set up different priorities like I mentioned before, but you can also set up the height and dimensions of a certain object so that, for example, if you have a tunnel, if the human or a certain object enters the tunnel at a certain height, the alarm will go off. But for example, if something bigger like a train goes through the tunnel, there won't be an alarm. So there are many different ways to set up AccraVision and it's, it's very, very user friendly. Okay. Where can you set up AccraVision? Pretty much um, everywhere, actually. Like, you can set it up at many industrial sites, power plants, data centers, factories, uh, oil and gas companies, like all of these places are good areas for AccraVision to be implemented, but also um, residential areas. These, we also have some installations here and it works in both worlds. So if you're thinking AccraVision will be a good fit for you, you're probably uh, actually right. It will be a good fit because it can be installed pretty much anywhere. Okay. Uh, due to the current situation here in the world, uh, we were trying to figure out how we can help 
uh, with the COVID crisis and possibly helping with people getting back to work or you know practicing social distancing standards. So we came up with Accurate Vision actually social distancing. As you will see here, there's cylinders around the humans. These cylinders represent the exact uh, distance that you're supposed to practice within social distancing. So for here, for example, you're supposed to be two meters apart. Maybe in America, you're supposed to be six feet apart. So whatever country you're from, you can set the settings to make sure that you are honoring social distancing standards in that country. And what happens is once the yellow cylinders come into contact with each other, an alarm will be uh, activated and you will get a close proximity detected. So this way you will know that if two people are not practicing social distancing skills. We believe that this possibly could help get the uh, people back to work, uh, maybe help with opening any business back up. If people have this system, then they can see, okay, hey, maybe these people are standing too close. So we're hoping um, maybe to do our part in helping with the uh, COVID crisis. Okay. Thanks a lot, Vanessa. Thanks for that great insight into accurate vision. We are already thrilled with our excursion in the exciting world of security applications. And I hope we were able to convey what is possible with a solution like accurate vision. Let's have a look now what questions from your side, from the audience are coming in. So I see at the moment one brief question regarding the meaning of channels in LiDAR sensors. And if we go back to, let's have a look. So this is the example I was looking for. So the more laser channels you can count on, the better is the spatial resolution that you see. So um, if you have, for instance, 32 laser channels or even 128, you get a denser representation of the environment. And most important, the better is the uh, depiction of small objects in the far range. So what counts to get a good uh, performance of the sensors is actually a couple of points. It's the uh, resolution the sensor gives you, the spatial resolution, which is partly driven by the number of channels. It is a question of how he can deal with the densities of uh, surfaces of object, and it's a question of the range, the overall scanning range of the sensor. What about reporting metrics, crowd control, etc.? So um, this might be for Tactica there, Vanessa. Yep, hold on one second for me. I'm actually going to, Martin has joined us for questions. Ah, cool. Yes, so I'm gonna actually pass this over to, to him. To okay, uh, hi Dieter, hello everybody. I just jump in, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So we have a couple of incoming questions and we just work on a question. Uh, what about reporting matrix, crowd control, et cetera, in accurate vision? Actually, crowd control. It's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, we have, of course, part of the accurate vision is strong uh, uh, reporting tool. As we can say, like we we uh, we save all the uh, alarm events inside in uh, in accurate vision. So later on, if uh, some uh, incident or some actions happen, uh, you can uh, check it out. Like I don't know, like week ago, uh, what was happened, and you can fly above our uh, three dimensional uh, map, and you can see the moving points. So we are recording all the moving points. Of course. Uh, as you know, as Vanessa maybe explained, that we know how many intruders, or we call it intruders, but it can be like uh, normal pedestrians or, or moving objects. So we know how many objects we have in the zone. So uh, it's, it is easy to set up the system. For example, like 
if you will have more than five uh, moving object in the zones, then we can also hire the threat level. I don't know if you talk about the threat level, but uh, we have a, inside the system what can be set up like, like this. For example, if you will have more than 15 people in this area, the threat level will go higher, and then our IO modules will be uh, triggered, and you can control other subsystems, for example. So this is how you can work with this crowd control, for example, if, if it's a question like that. Okay. I can, I can see also the question about the photogrammetry or actually about, uh, about how we can get the 3D maps inside of Accurate Vision. Is it possible, possible uh, Dieter, that we will share our screen and just uh, present? Uh... Yeah, sure, sure. Wait, I will stop my... So okay. yeah. Do you see it? I can see it here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, somebody asked if we can use the LiDAR for scanning uh, of a map. Of course we can, but also we are using the photogrammetry which uh, looks much more easier for our partners around the world, like globally. So our standard procedure how to obtain the map is that we are using the photogrammetry. So it's very easy, as you can see here. Uh, on the Google map or on the map, uh, you, uh, you have to uh, set up the area what needs to be scanned and then uh, using mostly drone, drone or flying drone for taking the pictures on this grid. But of, of course you can use the telephone or camera, doesn't matter, but drone is better because it's flying fully automatically. It's taking this, these pictures and uh, on the end of this flight mission, this one looks like seven minutes or something like that. After this, uh, drone is landing in the same position where it was takeoff. And then you need just download these uh, JPEG files, these pictures into the application, and then uh, 3D map is automatically uh, built. So for me, it looks much more easier than uh, import the map from AutoCAD or CAD systems. This is very easy. And then you have uh, always the actual map. Uh, as Vanessa said, uh, we are, our client is working on uh, Unity 3D engine. So uh, our programmers here can uh, later on adjust. If somebody needed, we can adjust the map with uh, some uh, moving objects like moving trees, moving water, and, and, and other things. So this is, you will see right now, there will be one this is the first step. So from the pictures are generated the point cloud, like uh, a small point cloud. Uh, now we uh, change it to the 3D mesh. So we have a full like 3D uh, object and then it's colorized and, uh, and it's using the real texture. So in, in, in this case, you can be done in half an hour or one hour with this kind of map. So it's very, I think it's very easy. And, and our partners like this uh, too. <laughs> it's very attractive how to, how to do the uh, 3D maps. You have to uh, export uh, as an OBJ file or FBX from Autodesk format. This is what uh, Accurate Vision supporting. And that's it. Then you loading this OBJ file into the Accurate Vision and then you're working with this 3D map. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Martin, we get a lot of questions in regarding how much weather conditions affect the sensor behavior. So um, I could answer it from the more technical perspective that we have multi-channel uh, sensors that we have can handle several returns. We can filter out pretty well the influence in rain, sleet, snow, smoke, etc. What is your experience from the practical point of using the sensors? Actually, actually, 
uh, rain and snow is not a problem. We, uh, we can, of course, we can see uh, the snowflakes, especially if you are close to the, close to the uh, LiDAR itself. But uh, this is for us, it's just the, uh, no, I mean, <clears throat> uh, I don't know the, I, I don't know the right one, but uh, it's, it's okay for us. It's shoom. Noise. Noise. noise for us it's, it's, <laughs> for us this is just the noise so we filter it uh, so that that's okay only heavy fog actually heavy fog uh, will uh, uh, will shorter the distance for, for how far you can see but uh, in in security uh, you know this is the physics but in security if you using the regular infrared barrier this is the problem because the uh, receiver will lose, uh, transmitter will lose the receiver. So you will be completely out. In our, uh, because we are source of light, then of course the range can be smaller, but still you will see something. So this is, this is big advantages uh, compared to the conventional security system because the system will inform you that there is the heavy fog, but you will still, uh, watch something. So it's not like that the system will be completely off. And uh, during the uh, design, you have to think about that. Uh, we have uh, some uh, tool uh, where you can simulate this. So if somebody wants to spend more money into it, ha have a more detectors, of course, they have to put the detectors closer to each other in case of heavy fox, but it's, it's depend. It's, I think in Europe, we don't have such a problem like I, I think in Malaysia or somewhere where we, where we solve something like that. So uh, I, I can say it's, a, it's a quite robust uh, against, against uh, uh, the heavy, uh, like bad uh, uh, environment. Yeah. yeah, we have gotten also a, a kind of related question regarding um, the wavelengths being used in the sensors. So I can say all our sensors work with 905 nanometer and 905 proves to be the most robust wavelength to generally handle all different weather conditions. Um, there may be situations where certain wavelengths uh, gives you for uh, very specific um, climatic uh, uh, circumstances, uh, uh, slightly better result, but overall in general, this is the ideal wavelength. And so we use it for all our sensors and for all application areas. Um, but benefit of 905 nanometer, isn't it alone? I think we should take a closer look about the combination of features that make up a great LiDAR sensor. So first there would be the wide field of view. Security applications require robust surround free perception in all light conditions. And with our spinning sensors, you get a 360 degree horizontal field of view and at least 30 degrees vertical field of view. And when it comes to the great range, a 200 meter or even more long range performance with higher resolution and point density. Remember the discussion about the benefit of many laser chains, but the high point density is crucial to handle any type of challenging security monitoring. And not to forget, you need exceptional reflectivity reception. Our LiDAR sensors measure reflectivity of objects independent of laser power and most distances. Our calibrated reflectivity brings strong performance with retro reflectors and handles difficult light conditions and enables long range detections of low reflectance objects. All of our new sensors give you 10% ref reflectivity in the long range. And imagine the benefit you get from automatic situation-based laser performance adjustment to avoid intensities overexposure. This helps you to deal with complex heterogeneous environments. So it's, it's a sum of all these characteristics that make up good sensors. Okay, what else? 
There's another question, Martin, I think that deals with the angular resolution of LIDARs. Um, mm. What is your um, experience with that for the security applications? Uh, what I like on Velodyne LIDARs is that uh, uh, they offer the linear distribution of lasers of uh, regular 16-channel uh, uh, Velodyne pack but also they have an unlinear uh, uh, version for ultra pack, which we really like it because we need, a, we need a, a bigger resolution in the middle of the, of the range, which is perfect example of the ultra pack that you probably saw during the Vanessa's presentation. So the typical angle is 30 uh, degree, right? But uh, most important for us is the resolution between this, uh, between these angles. So unlinear ultra pack is uh, for us the our favorite from the LIDARs of Velodyne. So I think we are through with the questions. Have we missed anything? Peter, I think under the webinar chat, there's a few questions, some we answered, um, but there was one, any limitation for zones oh, yeah. setting up? Uh, the answer to this is no. Uh, you can have as many zones as you prefer. It's uh, totally up to you on how you set up the system. And vertical, vertical and horizontal spacing, I can see this one. Uh, vertical, uh, the horizontal spacing is uh, 0 0.1 degree, right? Mm -hmm. So it depends on what kind of uh, lidars you will use and the, uh, the ultra pack. I, I mean, in the middle, there is the 0 0.05 degree. And the horizontal, you have to think uh, how, when uh, you rotate faster, then the horizontal spacing is bigger. When you will rotate uh, slower, uh, then you will have the maximum horizontal spacing. So, so that's the reason why we usually it's you can set up this. It's up to you. But usually we are rotating uh, ten times per second, like ten hertz. This is our ideal uh, because we don't want to lose uh, this, this uh, horizontal spacing. So I think we have covered all the questions. I think we have come to the end of this session. Okay, so thank you for joining our webinar. We do hope we met your expectations and we would be glad if you get back to us for further discussion. Um, I once share my screen because we have one slide left. And that was this here. So we look forward to your further questions and please feel free to reach out at any time to us, either to Velodyne or to Tactica there. I'm happy to answer all of your uh, later questions and Vanessa and Martin will be glad to help you on as well. So thank you. Thank all you. I can say is goodbye to all of you. Thank you, Melissa and Martin, for your great support. Cheers. Goodbye. Take care. Cheers, Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.